Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bones Eye. Can you hear that? Let me get you closer. Such a great sound. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bones Eye. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two shoots in here, so I'm probably going to cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the we bay. We up the trees and then we water as we need to. We try and get rid of those air pockets. On today's show, we're going to talk about uh, the importance of finding things to do during the down times so we can continue to think about Bonsai, we can continue to get work done so we're better, pre better prepared for Bonsai in the spring. So as we've had our topsy-turvy fall into winter here, and it just doesn't know what it wants to do weather-wise, we have downtime often where we can't do a whole lot with our trees, and we really would like to do a lot with our trees, or at least I would. But before I get to work on some of those trees, I had some other work that I knew I could get done. And so just a day or two or so ago, I was able to go ahead and sift all of that wonderful sphagnum moss that I got from the trip I went earlier in the year collecting some trees. So let's go take a quick peek at the um, sifting of some uh, sphagnum moss. Oh, and warning, I had a little audio trouble, so I shortened it down a little bit and didn't have too much of the crazy audio sound. I'm not sure what happened there, but Enough good stuff I figured I could still share with you. So let's go check that out. Another weekend in Minnesota that we just don't typically expect. We're the first full weekend in November and we're uh, on a five out of the last six days 70 stretch. Good thing. If you have the chance in the summertime to go collecting, like I had this opportunity this year to go get some tamarack up north. I think I'm gonna make a trip up there Maybe to get some more trees again. But I also want to go get some more sphagnum moss. So I laid out my sphagnum moss to dry a couple months back and left it in the garage. Put it in this uh, styrofoam cooler thing. And it's all super dry now. And because the weather is so gorgeous and I got some of my chores done earlier today, well, it's time to do some sphagnum moss sifting. nice and fluffy and then any moss that I have on the trees before I completely let winter take hold I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take some of the moss and I'll sift that as well or just break it apart and let it dry up with this over the winter and then we'll have a uh, moss spores in there I got my biggest, biggest uh, grate in here for my soil sifter. You just got to be careful with the sphagnum moss that you're not pushing too hard and really, really denting up your uh, your screen. The little uh, wires at the bottom there that make the crisscross pattern. Not the strongest, so I can see one of my next uh, inventions with my leftover lumber in my garage would be to make a little square box or a yeah probably a square box with a couple of kitty corner pieces of wood on where this round sifter can sit on top pretty securely and I can because right now it's not quite this uh this bin is not quite the right size so I've got this extra piece of wood to hold it in place but it works. I'd like a tighter grip. You don't have to hold on to this so tight. We can focus on the sifting. All right. There we go. Some nice stuff. We've got a five gallon bucket full of sphagnum moss from my trees that I harvested earlier in the year. Fantastic. That's going to go a long way next year. It's going to be a lot of sphagnum moss. 
How amazing will it be in the spring to have all that sphagnum moss all sifted out so I can be ready to repot and then put that on the top and give it a good watering and it'll be all set to go. I'm going to have to add some moss to that as well. What little moss I have drying that out and putting that in there too so we can get some more moss spores to uh, grow on the surface of my pots. Now just as important and probably even more important for me to do because I did a horrible job last year is to sift out my recycled repurposed bonsai soil. So when the bonsai soil and the trees have died and I've had some pots laying around and I put them all into a five gallon bucket well that's all kinds of different sizes mixed it up so I have to sift it out to not only separate the sizes again but I have to get rid of those small particles. Let's go see what I also did on the non-rainy day a couple days ago, sifting some soil. I need to put them into my three different size bins and get a couple of buckets of recycled soil. So I can use that for some of my experimentation. So here we go. Again, I got my log. Yeah. And that's how I sift my soil. So I got a piece of wood, got my little um, sifter here. I got the biggest opening first. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw this in here first because I wanna show you something. So I lost a few trees this year, actually more this year than I ever have. And I think the culprit, um, though this has a whole bunch of drain holes in it, there's no screen in here. But a lot of my pots, if you can see in there a little bit. If you don't um, wash your soil and get rid of some of the uh, sediments in there from broken down soil, all this more dirt, if you will, from the broken down organic uh, rocks and akadama, or the, I should say lava rocks, pumice, and akadama, you get kind of more of this sandy um, dirt in our bonsai. Whereas when we begin our bonsai journey, usually we have soil that's real gritty and all the rock sizes. So this soil right here certainly has a lot more organic material in here. There's some, there's some roots, decaying roots in here. And all of this is gonna go through. Most of it will go through. Because I only want this to catch the big stuff. The small size from the 1 16th inch. We got the medium size, eighth of an inch. And then we got the big from the quarter inch. All set. So all that has been recycled. Now again, the reason why we're recycling that, or uh, sifting it I should say, is we want as little dust as possible from, um, when you get these from the bag, from the uh, stores you buy them from, or from the supplier, you want to get all that dust out of there because that dust, that real fine particle, is going to settle at the bottom of your bonsai pots. And so the settling of that dust, I think, has clogged some of my holes. And I think I've had some wetter trees and root rot as a result of it. One last thing I want to show you is this is the remnants of the sifting. This is all that kind of powdery, really super fine level. And if that stuff is at the bottom of your bonsai pot, and the water gets that wet, it's just gonna almost make it like an impenetrable hole, right? Your, your meshing is gonna all clog up and you're gonna have probably root rot. So make sure you're sifting your soil super good to get it looking more like that. And like that. And like that. So one last thing to mention about uh, when you're doing your soils, keep in mind the dust particles from this lava rock, pumice and akadama, Inhaling that is uh, not the greatest thing in the world for your lungs, not healthy. The wind is really uh, whipping a lot today, so I haven't had too many troubles, but as I get to the finer soil on some of this uh, reefs purposed soil I'm using, get a lot more dust particles, and I'm just gonna breathe that in. So, get your masks on, and don't be breathing in that stuff. And we all have plenty of masks hanging around these days, right? So no excuses.
I can't stress enough how important it is to uh, make sure you're sifting your soil and getting rid of that dusty particle, that finer grit, that sandier material that for, the, for me, I think most of my loss of trees this year was because I had some root rot and trees that just were not getting a good balance of oxygen and soil and air, right? So I had the, the uh, soil in there, the oxygen was trying to get in there, I had water like crazy on my schedule, when it was dry, when it needed it, you know, I did all that, I think pretty good, but those few pots that had some recycled soil in it that I didn't care to sift out good enough before I used it, left a lot of that residue and that uh, sandy material in the bottom and it just clogged up all my drain holes. It is my theory, because I've never had more loss than this year on my bonsai trees, and when I got rid of all the soil in the pots, that's what I saw at the bottom of the pots. All of this really gunky, sooty stuff where the water I don't think was passing through fast enough. We didn't have a balance of oxygen and water. I think I probably had a little bit more root rot and just trees that did not want to sit in the water. Now if it was a weeping willow, uh, those things love the soil, uh, water, and they can be sitting in water and they're fine. So some varieties were okay, but the ones I lost, obviously did not like that. So make sure you're sifting your soil this winter if you can. Bring it indoors and remember to wear that mask indoors because the ventilation is not going to be there like the natural windy day I had. And make sure you get all those dust particles out of your soil as much as possible. Even if you have to wash it out a little bit and then dry the soil and then sift it again, make sure it's good and clean and crisp and gritty and not the sand. Get all that out of there so you won't have the same problems that I did. Very, very important to making sure your bones eyes stay healthy. So on the last video I mentioned that I took out my larches and put them on the bench so they could lose their leaves because I would like to do some cleanup work and trim these guys. So what are they shaking? I'm getting the uh, gold and uh, foliage to fall off here slowly but surely. Pretty close. I think uh, by a week or so I'll be able to pull these into the shop and do some trimming on the larch. Starting to see more of the shape because more of the foliage is falling off. But I still want to take a good look at it with all the foliage off. So. There's a quick update on the larch. We still got a little bit of more patience to have before we can start cutting into these guys and deciding what we might do with them. On today's update, we're going to visit the cabin cold frame yet again because I can't tell you enough again the stress here on checking those trees when this weather is all over the place. We got to make sure that we are watering our bonsai trees a lot more often than we typically would in a cold frame because it's been so warm. Let's check out the cold frame. So again, the roller coaster ride in Minnesota continues. We've got breezy and 70 degrees on the 6th, 7th of uh, November here today. So all the trees inside for the last week have hit peaks up uh, near 70, deg 70 degrees inside the cold frame. Even in the garage, they've been in the uh, upper 50s. So yeah, the, bra the uh, branching, the leaves, the roots, the trees, they're probably all just a little bit confused. So I've opened up the windows and the door to let the air circulate through. And the biggest challenge we have now with uh, all this up and down temperatures is we have to make sure that we're watering regularly. So I'm used to having my hose hooked up. That was put away three weeks ago now. Well, two to three weeks ago with that storm back in October. Um, and so all my trees are either in the vegetable garden or in these cold frames and I don't have access to a lot of uh, easy water with a hose. So we have to get in there like we do in the middle of winter anyway. We have to get our juice bottles full of pond water and get in here and start working on all the trees. So let's see if we can water and check some of the, uh, the uh, moisture level of the trees inside. Here we are to check the moisture level of all the trees. So I'm just going to go ahead and when I watered last, the bigger nursery pots seem to, seem to have some good moisture. Some of the uh, more coarse um, bonsai soil pots are a little dry right now. These all feel pretty good. But to these little ones up here are probably pretty dry. Yeah, pretty lightweight. Yep, so we have to water some of these today, right now. So let's go ahead and give them a couple of squirts here. So I got my juice boxes. Now the heat rises, of course, so the water up there or the, uh, the plants up there are the, uh, are the uh, driest. Good thing this isn't smell-o-vision for you folks because I am using my pond water in this time of year with all the decaying leaves and the 
stuff that's going on in that pond, the water doesn't smell so good. I usually have to go ahead and wash, take a nice good shower after I'm watering these trees. So as, all, as always is the case, you got to make sure you have access to your trees. I know the soil in the, in the inside ones in here, there are cuttings in there and those are going to be drier for sure and they drain a lot better because I have good drain soil in there. As soon as I water all these plants in here, at various levels, the humidity in here is going to go skyrocketing again, but that's why I'm leaving the doors open because my humidity level is getting up into the 90s. Upper 80s, close to 90. So not all of these need water, but definitely some of them do. The ones in the nursery pots, I have some leeway because it's more soil from the nursery pot and nursery stores. These bonsai trees all have the uh, bonsai soil in them, so they're draining a lot faster. So I got some more clippings back here and some real uh, good bonsai soil that's actually uh, very airy so it's going to dry out much faster. So I got to make sure I put a whole uh, quart of water on this guy to make sure that stays. Okay, one more day in the 70s. One more day in the 70s, that's going to cool off into the 30s for a couple of days and we're going to get some uh, rain, maybe even some snow. And then it's going to be highs into the 40s again, so we probably should be good for the rest of the season. So, a couple more to water and we can call this uh, another day. I got this big maple here. This big maple has a lot of that uh, soil I did with my semi-transplant uh, plant uh, about a month ago. I put it in this new pot so it could fit into the cabin cold frame. So this one dries out pretty rapidly too on top, but it's a very big pot with a lot of soil. So I know the lower segments are probably not as dry, but I don't want to risk this one right now my big tree and boy this pond water is smelling really good I got my, uh, my log with my weeping willows and there we have it so I'm able to reach all my trees and get them all a little bit more water I'll check them again in a couple of days and there you have it another update the cabin cold frame ready to become a cold frame again right now 70 degrees 70 degrees 66 humidity this will probably go up towards 80 as soon as I close this off so we'll let it uh, air out a little bit and uh, we'll just keep an eye on it keep a close eye on those cold frames thanks everyone for watching that does it for today's bonsai for this episode I'm Dave Weiss so glad you could stick around please be healthy everybody take care and uh, we'll see you on the next one where we might be working on those larches yeah I hope the tamarecks are ready I'm gonna go check them now actually and maybe get to work and work on that next video for you. All right, we'll catch you on the next one, everybody. Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Uh, in the sense that I have a branch that splits into two, shoots in here, so I'm probably gonna cut this thing off right about here this fall. I've taken my uh, knob cutter and I've gotten rid of some of that. So I just put them on the bottom, growing upwards into the bay. We the trees and then we water as we need to.